Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you my favorite top eight add-ins in Microsoft PowerPoint. There are hundreds of different add-ins. Some of them are good and some of them are bad. Lucky for you, I went through and I installed hundreds of them to identify which ones I think are the best. If you install these add-ins, you should be able to increase your productivity in PowerPoint. Well, why don't we jump on the PC and let's check these out. Here I am in Microsoft PowerPoint and today I'm on point to pull together a company meeting presentation for the Kevin Cookie Company. This is an internal meeting that we have. Over on the left hand side, you can see I have a whole bunch of slides already pulled together, but I think add-ins can really help me elevate the quality of my presentation. To be able to use an add-in, let's go up to the top tabs on the ribbon and let's click on insert. Over in the middle, you'll see a section for add-ins. Up on top, we can get add-ins. So if you don't have any yet, we can go into the add-in store. And yes, it's called a store, but don't worry, you don't have to pay for all add-ins. Some are free, some cost money. And then also you can access all the add-ins that you already have. Let's click on get add-ins to see what type of add-ins we can get. This opens up a prompt with all of the different add-ins that you can add into Microsoft PowerPoint. In the top left-hand corner, you have a search field where you can search for specific add-ins. As I go through my top eight, if any of them seem especially appealing to you, you can simply search for it and then you can add the add-in. Over on the left-hand side, there are also some different categories of add-ins. You could browse through those just to see what all the different options are. And here you'll see an overall list of all of the different add-ins. Now, I wasn't kidding when I said there are a lot of add-ins. There are hundreds and hundreds of different add-ins that you can add to PowerPoint. Now that we know how to get add-ins, that brings us to add Add in number one, you can add QR codes to your PowerPoint slides. Here within my presentation on slide two, we recently rolled out a website for the Kevin Cookie Company. By the way, as a quick aside, if you're interested in being able to create your own website that looks like this for free, I've included a link in the description with a tutorial video. Right here, I want our employees to go to this website and they could type in the URL, but it's a mouthful. Instead, I'd rather have everyone take out their phone and they could simply take a picture of a QR code. Now, I've already installed the add-in called QR for Office. To access my add-in, I'll click on my add-ins right up here, and then here I see QR for Office. I'll click on this, and then next let's click on Add. This opens up a pane over on the right-hand side with QR for Office. Right at the top, I can type in a URL or text that I'd like to encode. Here I'm going to type in kevincookiecompany.com. Over on the left-hand side, I could insert many different types of values. Here, for instance, I entered in a website. I could also enter in an email address, a telephone number, an SMS, or a geographical location, and you could even insert custom values. I just wanna insert a website, so I'll go with HTTP. Down below, I could also format what the QR code looks like. Right now, I just have it set to a black foreground and a white background. The default looks fine to me, so I'll stick with that. Right here, I could also adjust the size. Here, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Next, I'll go down to the bottom and click on insert. Here now, you'll see that it's inserted a QR code into my slide. Here, I could also adjust the size to make it a little bit bigger. Now, let's say that maybe I wanted to use it outside of PowerPoint too. I can right click on this and I could even save the picture if I wanna use it elsewhere. I'm now on my phone and I'm aiming it at this slide. As soon as I aim it over at the QR code, you'll see that my photo app automatically identifies that there's a web address associated with this QR code. When I click on that link, it'll bring me to the Kevin cookiecompany.com website. So this way it makes it super easy for all of our employees to check out our new website. And I hope they like it. I put a bit of time into creating it. This brings us to add-in number two. You can add free stock images using an add-in called Pexels. Here on slide number three, at the Kevin Cookie Company, we are opening a new factory. Now, unfortunately, I didn't make it out to the factory to take an actual photo, so I'm hoping that I can use Pexels to find a great stock image of a factory and pass it off as our own. Microsoft PowerPoint includes its own set of stock images. Under insert on the ribbon, down here under pictures, you can insert stock images. However, I think it's still worthwhile getting Pexels. I found that it has a broader selection of images. Once again, if you want to install it, you can click on get add-ins. I've already installed it, so I'll click on my add-ins right here. Next, let's click on Pexels and then click on add. 
Right here, this shows me a message that Pexels has been added to my insert ribbon. Right here, I can click on Pexels and this will open up a frame over on the right hand side. It's extremely easy to use Pexels. Right up here to find a photo, you can simply type in the text for the photo that you're looking for. What's also really neat is you can search for photos by a specific color. Now, I wanna include a factory photo, but I want it to match the color of a cookie. Cookies are brown, so let me look for factories that are brown. Here I'll click on search by color, and let me go over to yellow, and over here on the right hand side, this is kind of a brownish color. So let me see if I could find a factory that looks like that. Here I'll type in factory and then let's click on search. Here I can see a ton of different pictures of factories and there are lots of different options here. But the one that looks most similar to the Kevin Cookie Company factory, I'd have to say is probably this one right here. When I click on this, this inserts the image into our slide. My slide is now looking a lot better. And one thing I just wanna call out, this is an internal presentation and I'm sharing you these tips in confidence. So please don't take a screenshot of this slide and share it with the press. I can't have people knowing that our factories look like this. This brings us to add in number three. You can add a break time timer to your slides. Now at the Kevin Cookie Company, we work extremely hard, but we also like to take breaks lots and lots of breaks, and I'm probably most guilty of that. To add a break time timer, once again, let's go up to my add-ins, and over here, I have an add-in called break time. I'm going to click on this, and down below, let's click on add. This inserts a break time timer onto my slide. Here, I can move where the break time timer appears. I want it to be a little bit over on the side, so you can still read the title of the slide. Over here, I have a few different controls. First off, I can set how long I want the break timer to run for. Now, we've only gone through three slides in the presentation, so 10 minutes seems a little excessive. Let me go with a five minute break. Over on the right hand side, I can also choose the type. There's nothing like having a drink break, so let me select that, and here you notice the background has updated. Now, you probably thought I was talking about alcoholic drinks. No, we're just gonna have a water break. Come on, it's a company meeting. Over on the left hand side, I could also start my timer and here the countdown has started. I could stop it and here I can start it again or I could reset it so it goes back to five minutes. This brings us to add in number four. You can use draw.io to create flowcharts in PowerPoint for free. If you've ever tried to create a flowchart in PowerPoint before, you probably know that it's extremely painful. Here I put down the first step, I could put in an arrow, but it requires lots and lots of clicks. Instead, we can use the add-in for draw.io to make this extremely easy. I have draw.io open and you can access it by going to draw.io or you can go to the website diagrams.net. If you've ever used Microsoft Visio before, it'll probably look very familiar. The biggest difference though is this is entirely free to use, so your wallet won't be quite as light. At the Kevin Cookie Company, not only am I on point to pull together the deck, but they also want me to show how we're planning on making it to profitability. So I put down a quick flowchart showing how we're gonna do that. Now I wanna bring this into our PowerPoint deck. I'm now back in PowerPoint and I pulled together my flowchart and I'm ready to bring it in. Right up here under insert, let's go back to my add-ins and right here at the top, I have the option for draw.io diagrams. Next, let's go to the bottom right hand corner and click on add. This opens up a prompt over on the right hand side showing me that I now have a new icon on my insert ribbon for draw.io. Let's click on this. This opens up a pane over on the right hand side. You can access your draw.io files from OneDrive, from Google Drive, or from your PC. I saved the file directly to my PC, so I'll click on pick device file. Once I select my file, I'll click on open. Here over on the right hand side, I can see a preview of what the flowchart looks like, and then I'll click on insert. This has now inserted my flowchart onto the slide. I could adjust the size to make it a little bit bigger, and I think leadership will be very pleased with this plan of making it to profitability. We're gonna sell trillions of cookies. This company will be worth a lot of money. This brings us to add in number five. You can create your own custom comic characters using an add-in called Pixton. Now, just like we've been doing all along, let's click on insert and let's go over to my add-ins. Right here, I see the add-in for Pixton comic characters. Let's select that and then click on add. 
Here now, I see a new icon added to the home ribbon over on the far right hand side for Pixton characters. Let's click on this. This opens up a pane over on the right hand side for Pixton comic characters. Now with this slide where I talk about our path to profitability, this is a really exciting plan, but I don't know if a flowchart on its own really communicates that. Instead, I want to use a comic character to help reinforce that message. To get started, let's click right over here on this button. And first off, I can choose the type of person. I'm gonna go with this one right here. Next, I could choose a skin tone. Here I could choose the hair type. And here I can choose the outfit. Now this is a cookie company, so let's go with the baking outfit. Last, I can also choose a pose. And once again, I want someone who looks really excited and I think this one fits the bill. When I click on that, it inserts my comic character into my slide, and I can now resize it and position it wherever I want on my slide. I'll put them right here. I think it really helps to reinforce the message. This brings us to add-in number six. You can very quickly and easily insert a word cloud into your PowerPoint slide. At the Kevin Cookie Company, we value customer feedback, and as part of every company meeting, we wanna make sure that all of our employees are looking at recent feedback from our customers. Here I have a big list of feedback, and it's kind of hard to make sense of it when it's just in a list like this. I think an add-in can help us here. Once again, let's go up to Insert and then click on My Add-ins. Within My Add-ins, let's select the one that's called the Pro Word Cloud. Once you select that, let's click on Add. This, once again, opens up a pane over on the right-hand side. Here we could select the font for our word cloud, the color, the layout, the case, how many max words. So there are a whole bunch of different settings that you have to configure what your word cloud looks like. Here, I'm going to select all the words that I want to include in this word cloud. Once I have all the words selected, I'll click on Create Word Cloud. Here you see the word cloud up above, and here I can click on it and that copies it to my clipboard. Here I can go over to my slide, and now I can paste it, and here I have a word cloud. This is a lot easier to read than this list. Words that appear more often in this list show up larger within the word cloud. Now we have some interesting feedback. Rude, expensive, salty, slow, that can't be. Oh, at least some people seem to say delicious. I don't know if I buy this. There must be some mistakes in this list. You know, here if I look down, I see one person said nasty. I think that's a typo. I think they meant to say tasty. I'm going to go through and just update some of this feedback before I finalize the deck. Add in number seven. You can make your presentation more dynamic by including polls. Now, most presentations you sit in, they tend to be just a one-way communication where the presenter spews out information at you. Instead, why not insert a poll into your presentation to get your audience a little more engaged? Just like we've been doing all along, let's go up to My Add-ins and let's click on the option that says Poll Everywhere. Now one thing to call out, within the Add-in store, there are all sorts of different poll applications. You have one called Swift Polling, you have Mentimeter, and the list goes on and on. Now all of them work fairly well. The reason I chose Poll Everywhere is because you can construct your poll directly in PowerPoint. So in terms of simplicity, this seems like the easiest to use. Once we select it, let's go down and click on Add. This inserts Poll Everywhere onto my slide, and I don't yet have any polls created. I want this to be a Q&A. Let's go up to the top left-hand corner and click on New Activity. Right within New Activity, I can see all of the different types of activities that I can insert to engage my audience. I could insert a multiple choice question, a word cloud, and here's a Q&A. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'll select Q&A, and then I could type in a title for my Q&A. I'll type in what questions do you have for the Kevin Cookie Company leadership team. Next, let's click on Save. I now have my one question showing up within this list. Just like I could do with many of the other add-ins, here I can reposition the add-in. Now I want the Q&A to take up the full screen, so I'll simply reposition this so it uses up the full slide. Once I'm ready to launch the Q&A, I can click on this activity. Once I click on the activity, you'll see the website URL that attendees can go to to submit their questions. With multiple choice questions, they could also go to this URL and submit their responses to the multiple choice questions, and in a moment, we'll see feedback directly on this slide. To be able to see feedback over on the right-hand side, first off, we need to activate it. 
Once I click on activate, people can now go here and they can start submitting their questions. And look at that, the questions from our employees have started to flood in. We really have an inquisitive bunch of employees here at the Kevin Cookie Company. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to respond to them now because we need to move on to the next add-in. This brings us to add-in number eight. You can add a to-do list to your PowerPoint presentation. Now we've gone through this presentation and it's really taking shape and I think I'm almost done. However, there are a few more things that I wanna make sure I update and if I could use a to-do list, that would be really helpful. I'll go up on top and let's click on my add-ins. Within my add-ins, there's one called To-Do List Pro. Let's click on this and then next, let's click on Add. This opens up a pane over on the right-hand side where I have a fairly basic to-do list. Here I could type in a list name and I need to finalize a few items in the deck. Down below, I can type in what those items are. Here now I've included a few different items and I can add them to my list. If I save and close my presentation and reopen it, I'll be able to see this same to-do list again. Once I go through and I finalize some of these items, I can check the box and that'll complete the item. If I click on this red X, this will remove it altogether. So this is a nice way to stay on top of tasks that you need to complete related to your PowerPoint presentation. All right, well, if you found some new add-ins that you think you're going to start using moving forward, please give this video a thumbs up. Also, to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you wanna see me cover any other topics on this channel, leave a note down below. All right, well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.